Robert Mugabe has stepped down and the world is celebrating. Jacob Zuma is nearing the end of his term and the world is celebrating. Let democracy reign, they chant from the streets. Of course, we should rejoice in the news that Mugabe has been forced to step down and we should rejoice when that time comes for Jacob Zuma. But we should not have any illusions about the prospects of democracy in Africa. What does democracy even mean? Francis Fukuyama rightly said that there are about as many definitions for democracy as there are lawyers. And as we know, the term is derived from the Greek words demos and kratos, which means people and govern. But democracy does not simply mean that the majority can govern in whatever way they like. If, for example, the majority party were to decide that women should be deprived of the right to vote, or that opposition to the majority party should be banned, would that be democratic? No, that would be majoritarianism, not democracy. A difference that many democratically elected African leaders don't seem to understand. This is something that even the president of Africa's flagship democracy, South Africa, doesn't understand. This was particularly evident when Jacob Zuma said in Parliament, we have more rights because we are the majority and you have less rights because you are the minority. Absolutely, that is how democracy works works. No, Mr. President, that is not how democracy works. The difference between democracy and majoritarianism lies in accountability, the upholding of the rule of law, and especially the protection of minority rights. But in Africa, we have seen repeatedly that democratically elected leaders do not understand this, and that many of them, including Robert Mugabe and Jacob Zuma, are not Democrats at all, but rather power-hungry dictators in disguise who use the idea of democracy to obtain that power. And that is a problem for democracy. It does not provide for proper protection against dictators in disguise. This is why George Orwell, the author of Animal Farm, wrote that in the case of a word like democracy, not only is there no agreed definition, but the attempt to make one is resisted from all sides. It is almost universally felt that when we call a country democratic, we are praising it. Consequently, the defenders of every kind of regime claim that it is a democracy and fear that they might have to stop using the word if it were tied down to any one meaning. Words of this kind are often used in a conscientiously dishonest way. That is, the person who uses them has his own private definition but allows the hearer to think that he means something quite different. In his signature poetic language, philosopher Edmund Burke highlighted the problem of democracy as follows. An artful man became popular. The people had power in their hands and they devolved a considerable share of their power upon their favorite. And the only use he made of this power was to plunge those who gave it into slavery. And we have seen exactly this problem in practice, especially in Africa. This is why Samuel Huntington said that politicians in non-Western societies do not win elections by demonstrating how Western they are. We have seen, for example, what happened during democratization in Rwanda. In 1994, as Nelson Mandela was being sworn in as the democratically elected president of South Africa, the Hutu majority embarked on a devastating genocide, murdering upwards of 800,000 members of the Tutsi minority. Today, it is known that preparation for the genocide started in 1990 and at several meetings it was stated by Hutu leaders that a genocide would be the only solution to Rwanda's problems. In 1991, a new constitution was accepted in Rwanda, enabling a multi-party democracy, or should we say, a disguise of democracy. The Rwandan government was praised around the world while it was preparing for genocide. The national radio station, Radio Television Libre de Mil Colin, or RTLM, was established in which the genocide was openly encouraged. When questioned about this by diplomats, the Rwandan president, Juvenal Habyarimana, sarcastically remarked that he cannot stop or control the radio as Rwanda is now a democracy and that means that he should protect freedom of speech. Democracy in Rwanda was thus used as a cover-up to promote genocide. When the liberator, Robert Mugabe, became the democratically elected leader of Zimbabwe back in 1980, the world rejoiced. 
Here is a man who will promote freedom, non-racialism and prosperity of all Zimbabweans. Those who criticized him were accused of being pessimistic, right-wing, counter-revolutionary or even racist. Today we know that under the presidency of Robert Mugabe, Zimbabwe had to scrap its currency when they started printing 100 trillion dollar notes. That wasn't even enough to buy a Coke. The democratic leader radically transformed Zimbabwe into the world's worst economy. And by now we haven't even gotten to Jacob State Capture Zuma, the democratically elected president of South Africa. Should we conclude that democracy is an evil system? Certainly not. Winston Churchill summed it up perfectly when he said that many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government except for all the other forms that have been tried from time to time. The point is this. To claim every time when a new African leader is ushered into power as a result of some voting process or when a corrupt one is removed that it is a victory for democracy is myopic and naive. As is the case with everything in life, it is not the input that should be measured, but the outcome. An election is a democratic input. Prosperity should be the outcome. Perhaps one day we will discover a better form of government than democracy, but before then, we should evaluate democracy for what it is. The removal of Robert Mugabe is not a victory for democracy. It is proof that democracy has failed. My name is Adam Strutz and this is your fact sheet.